When it comes to great places to live and enjoy life, Vero Beach, Florida seems to have it all. This small town along the Treasure Coast straddles the Atlantic and is the perfect place for those who enjoy the sun and sand. And with water everywhere, you could spend the day fishing in the river or on the ocean. Boaters from all over are drawn to the waterways around here, including the Indian River Lagoon, considered one of the most environmentally diverse estuaries in the U.S. The neighborhoods in and around Vero Beach are quaint and quiet. Shopping too is quaint, but upscale. And the restaurants are as diverse as the residents and the visitors who make Vero Beach one of the great places to head to throughout the year. Yes, Vero Beach is a haven for water sports, fishing, and of course, golf. It is also home to the Sandridge Golf Club. Now, Sandridge is owned and operated by Indian River County and features two outstanding layouts, the dunes and the lakes courses. And both golf courses were designed by golf course architect, Ron Garl. Designed by Ron Garl, the Dunes course opened for play back in 1987. Now the layout is the oldest of the two golf courses here at Sandridge Golf Club. And what sets this golf course apart from most other Florida golf courses? It's the elevation changes found throughout the entire golf course itself. As Ron Garl routed the layout through the old Florida Ridge, and a silica mining operation that once occupied the land on which the course sits. Yeah, you have anywhere from 30 to 60 foot changes there on some of the holes, especially on the back nine. Playing to nearly 7,100 yards, this layout will challenge the best ball strikers and those players that can hit for distance. Uh, which is a very good test of golf because uh, a lot of the yardages from those goal tees is a lot of narrow shoots um, and, and the fairways are, are pretty narrow, especially on that front nine. You got to get through that front nine unscathed really to shoot it, post a good score. Yeah, I put it up against any golf course in the area uh, and I have. I actually had you know, professional events here and a lot of big uh, junior events and nobody really tears that course up. While it's important to find the short grass off the tee here on the dunes course, it's just as important to get some distance on your drives as well. Because you get your ball in play, you know, your second shot is, you're, it's green light all the way. But uh, yeah, that front nine, it's, it's tight. So getting that driver in play is, is a major, major plus. When taking aim for the green on your approach shots, you'll do so to putting surfaces that are not overly large in size. I mean, the average size of the green is probably about 4,500 square feet. Um, so you've, it's, especially on a lot of the par threes. I think a lot of the par threes are very, they're small greens. And uh, now with some of my new cold tees, 230 yards, for instance, on number 17, and number 14 coming into to the smaller targets is a challenge. The Ron Garl Design Dunes course here at the Sandridge Golf Club in Vero Beach, Florida. One of two fantastic golf courses you can play at one of the finest daily fee facilities in the entire Sunshine State. It's a, it's a great challenge. It's a great test of golf. It, you'll use every club in the bag. And that's, that's what I think a good design is anyways, instead of just hitting driver wedge all the time. All four par threes on the dunes course are strong holes of golf. In fact, three of the four play to excess of 200 yards. Number six, the shortest, plays to about 170 yards. Still, the challenge at number six is finding the putting surface, which makes up about 95% of the green complex. The par 3-6 on the dunes course is a great golf hole. Now with the new gold tee box, it's become even more challenging. The challenge with it is at lake level, instead of the old 
gold tee, which is more elevated, making it a little bit easier on the eye, where now it's, oh, geez, now I gotta go over the lake more. It seems that way, at least, uh, when you're looking at it from that level. And this is a golf hole where the wind does come into play, but mostly in your favor. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's usually downwind in the summertime because of the sea breeze, and then um, that north wind will kind of blow it sideways. Rarely do we get one in, in our face on that hole. And what makes number six so tough is there's no bailout area. Maybe a little right, but see, the, off the tee, the more right you go, the more that water comes into play because it's a longer carry. And you pull, you tug it a little bit left, it's in the water. So your aiming point here at number six is the center of the green. Worst case scenario there is you might have 25 foot pot if you're in the center of the green to whatever, wherever the flag could possibly be. Score. Just getting on the, on the complex somewhere up there is always a sigh of relief for uh, everyone and then making a birdie is just uh, icing on the cake. Hi, I'm Mindy Brittner from Fit for Golf, Fit for Life, and we're here at Porter's Neck Country Club in Wilmington, North Carolina. So today we're inside, it's a, a rainy day outside, and instead of working on the golf swing or actually going out and hitting balls, we're going to work on a little bit of core stability, upper body work, um, some strengthening for the golf swing when we can go back outside tomorrow. So what we're going to do today is a plank position, but then we're going to add a little fluff to it. We're going to do knee to elbow and knee to opposite elbow so we can really work on rotation and disassociation of the upper body and lower body. Disassociation is a word that's thrown around a lot these days, but it really means nothing more than can you separate your upper body and lower body, which is really needed in the golf swing for maximum potential of club head speed. So let's try this. You're going to come down on the floor, spread out your fingertips so you can really share the, um, share the pressure of your upper body coming down. I see too many people like this and they wonder why their wrists hurt. So spread out your fingertips. Your chest is going to stay between your hands. You're going to come up into a plank position. So this is the best plank. Your feet are as wide as your hands, hands are as wide as your shoulders, and you freeze. If you're this way, it may hurt your wrist too much. And if you're here, look, I'm a mountain. So you don't want to be a mountain, and you certainly don't want to be a sliding board because that's going to get into your back. You want to be in a very strong position, like a statue. So you're going to inhale through your nose. As you exhale, you're going to pull your belly button into your spine, and you're going to try to get your knee to touch your elbow. I'm shaking a little bit. I can feel it. And then you're going to bring it back. Inhale. You're going to try to get that contraction of your obliques on the side. Sometimes I even cramp in this position when I'm doing the exercise because I'm really contracting. It's, mu it's muscle confusion. Cramping's fine. You're just trying to get used to an exercise. So let's try. Let's try six, three each side. Ready? Okay. Once you have that, Oh, and by the way, if you're having trouble getting it, you might find that you're in this position. You have to shift your weight forward a little bit each time. Okay, disassociation time. The golf swing is a rotation, isn't it? It's a rotation. It's a hip rotation. So let's try that. We're going to inhale. Take opposite elbow, opposite knee. Inhale, exhale. Full contraction. I can feel the muscles across my belly button in an X fashion, <sighs> diagonal, <sighs> diagonal, <sighs> diagonal, <sighs> and relax. Okay, I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to shake it out a little bit because I can really feel it. You want to find your strongest position right away. You want to get through 10 of each one, and there's your workout. So let's try it. Here we go. <sighs> Cross. Exhale, and relax, and then just a little bit of a stretch there at the bottom as well. Okay, plank position, 
knee to same elbow, knee to opposite elbow to help with your disassociation for your golf swing. So for that exercise and more, check out my website, fitforgolfusa.com. Hole number 16 is the longest par four on the back nine on the dunes course. Now off the tee, it plays slightly uphill to a fairway that dog legs 90 degrees to the right. For the big hitters, they can challenge that dog leg. For everyone else, you've got to find the short grass off the tee, get some distance, then you'll be taking aim for a medium-sized green, probably holding a mid-iron in your hand. Hole number 16 here on the dunes course is a par four that dog legs to the right. So the key to having success here at number 16 is to challenge the dog leg to shorten up the hole. For the longer hitters, depending on what tee they're playing from, they could cut some of the dog leg off, uh, but that hole always it seems to be into the wind. So you kind of can go down this, the middle part of the hole and with the draw or just a slight cut and then you're left with about a 160 yard shot in. Your approach shot here at number 16 is playing slightly uphill and again into the wind. So you need to take enough club so you don't come up short and end up in any one of the grass swells that course designer Ron Garl placed around this green complex. And the green itself here at number 16 is ample in size. It's probably one of our largest greens out there. It's about 40 paces uh, in length uh, and probably about 30 wide. So there's a lot of uh, whole pinnable locations uh, that I use for tournaments. But yeah, that, that, back, that back left is my favorite one, of course. And if you walk off number 16 with a par, you've done well. Yeah, it's a good score because it's a, it's a long hole. And with my new gold tee there, it's about a 460 yard hole. Hi, I'm Bella Nagy, Director of Golf here at Sanders Golf Club, and today we're going to talk about chipping. Chipping is a shot that we play from around the greens where it doesn't require us to lift the ball very much. I think the biggest mistake people make here is they try to take their sand wedge or lob wedge and try to carry the ball all the way to the hole. Uh, this requires a lot of touch as well as uh, a lot of skill. So to make this process easier, we're gonna have one setup and one swing, and I've chosen three different targets today that all we're gonna do is change the clubs for. So we're gonna use a seven iron to go to a farther target, uh, maybe an eight iron to a little closer, and a nine iron to go even closer than that without changing anything. And this will make your life a lot easier on the golf course. So the ball position and chipping, the ball should be off our back foot. And I want you to imagine a clock on the wall where six o'clock is our starting position. Here's three to my right, nine to my left. Um, we're gonna make a swing that goes about five to seven o'clock. A lot like our putting stroke, maybe just a little bit longer version of it. So as I set my club up to my golf ball here, ball's off my back foot. My hands are a little forward as a result. Again, five to seven o'clock. The ball will ran, will land about a third on the way onto the green and run the other two thirds. For the next flag, all I'm gonna do is change clubs. So now uh, I'm gonna take this nine iron, make sure I change my alignment here. And same setup, same swing, five to seven o'clock. Again, you see the ball go a hair higher and it doesn't roll as much because of the loft. Uh, my third target, I've got a pitching wedge, which is even closer, but nothing's gonna change. I'm still gonna have the ball position off my back foot and still five to seven o'clock. And again, about one third in the air, two thirds on the ground. So you can see the difference in the three clubs. Uh, the key here is we're reducing our margin for error because we're not making as much swing and it's all about keeping the ball as low as possible whenever possible. 13% of your score is gonna come from this area from the green. And if you can get the ball close enough to get it up and down, you're gonna be a much happier golfer. Our second course here at the Sand Ridge Golf Club is the Lakes Course. Now the Lakes Course opened back in 1992, about five years after the Dunes Course opened. And while the Dunes Course rewards those golfers who can hit for distance off the tee, the lakes course rewards those golfers who can find the right spot in the fairway with their tee shots. Yes, the lakes course is much shorter than the dunes, yet this par 72 layout offers just as much of a challenge 
as its longer and older sibling. Sandridge is owned and operated by Indian County and features two 18-hole golf courses. The Dunes course, the original course here at Sandridge, opened for play back in April of 1987. Five years later, the second 18-hole course, the Lakes course, opened for play. Both golf courses were designed by noted golf course designer Ron Garl. Though not long by today's standards, the Lakes course plays to 6,255 yards. Yet for those who have played it, most would agree the Lakes course offers a true test of golf. Absolutely. I always say, bring me your scorecard in the round and uh, let me know what you shot. And if you want to score out here on the Lakes course, you'll need to find the right spots in the fairway off the tee and avoid the H2O that comes into play on 14 of the 18 holes. You can't take driver on every hole, so you've, you've got to position the ball off the tee, and then with that, uh, if you're in the right position, then you can get into a good spot on the greens so that give yourself opportunities. Whether you're a low handicap golfer or just learning the game, the Lakes course is suitable for everyone. We've got tees from 2,000 yards all the way to uh, 6,200 yards. We've installed these family tees, uh, front forward tees a few years back, and actually have them rated uh, where a lot of our uh, older population is, is playing from, and new players as well and, as juniors. And one of the nice things about both the Lakes and the Dunes courses is that you will not find a single home anywhere on the property. So once you're on the golf course, you're one with nature basically, and, and not many of the holes go side by side either. They're kind of just, you're out there, you're on your own, and it's, it's just a very pleasant uh, time that you can have out there. The Lakes course at Sandridge Golf Club in Barrel Beach, Florida. One of the top ranked public golf clubs in the entire state, and dollar for dollar, the best golfing value you'll find in the Sunshine State. Our highest rate in season, peak season, is $52 for 18 holes with a golf cart, which uh, I don't know if you can get that in the Orlando market or Palm Beach market for sure for the quality of golf that they're receiving here. Golf course architect Ron Garl did an excellent job when he created the Lakes course here at Sand Ridge. Now it's not a very long layout, but each hole offers a unique challenge to it. Here at the par 5 fourth, it's not so much about length or lack of it, but how well your ball carries off the tee. The second shot, where do you want to place it? Then on your approach, what part of the green do you want to hit to? It's an intimidating tee shot, especially from one of the back tees. It's, it's a 200 to 220 yard uh, carry over water and the, the area that you're carrying to looks very narrow from the tee. It's actually a pretty generous landing area. And from there, it's a pretty narrow second shot. For the big hitters, going for the green in two from here, it's about 230 yards. The longer players actually like to hit that green in two or try to, but there's a lot of bunkers protecting that green up there. Playing it as a three shot par five, you really wanna stay left of center in the fairway to avoid the bunkers up the right hand side. Plus, it also gives you a better angle when you're coming into the green on your third shot. All right, if I had the opportunity to go for the green at two, uh, I always try to, if, if I'm gonna miss it, I know I, I wanna miss it left, because then it's just an easy chip or pitch up to the green from that point. The green itself is not overly big, but then again, it's not that small. It's a shorter par five, so uh, I think the green size is perfect for the length of the hole. And you know, it's got this ridge that goes through the middle of it. It pre you know, presents a little bit of a challenge in reading it uh, correctly, but it, it's a, depending where the flag is, you can make the hold a lot tougher. Our final look at the Lakes course here at the Sand Ridge Golf Club brings us out here to hole number 14. Now this is a golf hole that's been voted multiple times as one of the toughest, if not the toughest golf hole along the treasure coast of Florida. As is the case throughout the entire lakes course, it's not so much about distance off the tee, it's where you place your tee shot in the fairway. And that theme holds true here at number 14. Find the right spot in the fairway and the green opens up. Find the wrong spot 
and you'll be struggling for any type of success here at hole number 14. The hardest hole on their Treasure Coast here, voted uh, a number of years in a row. On the scorecard, it doesn't look like a very tough hole, 401 from the back tee, but it's the water that separates the fairway from the island green that makes this a difficult par four. For the longer hitters, you can't even hit a driver there most times unless you're into the wind and uh, you can't go left. Left is, is jail because then you kind of have to just punch you back out and, and hope for a good opportunity to third shot onto the green. And while it's important to hit a very good drive here at hole number 14 on the lakes course, it is just as important to be spot on with your approach shot into this green. But that second shot over, over the water to the green is another good 120 yard carry, uh, depending on the angle. And it's a pretty large green too, so it's and it's very receptive, uh, especially if you're coming in there with a longer iron like uh, a lot of our clientele probably uh, use to get to that hole. What part of the green you want to hit to will be determined on where the flag is at. Depends on where it is. If it's anywhere on the right side, yeah, you just go to the center of the green and just uh, take your two putt and move on. Par is always an excellent score on that hole. Uh, if it's anywhere in the middle to the left side of the green, yeah. You, it's, it's green light, definitely at the flag.